It was during a time when I was neither rich nor famous, stated a man. I was in the New York airport when I saw a newspaper vendor. I reached deep into my pocket only to find that I didn't have enough money to pay for the newspaper. The vendor said to me, I'm giving you this for free. On his insistence, the man took the newspaper. And coincidentally, two or three months later, the same thing happened. The man found himself once again in the New York airport and again was a little short on change. The, ven the same vendor offered him the newspaper again. He refused and said that he couldn't take it. He said, you can take it. I'm sharing this from my profit. I won't be at a loss. And so that man took that newspaper once again. Now, some 19 years later, that man became famous and known to many, many people. And suddenly he remembered that vendor who gave him that newspaper. And so he went to find this man. And he found him and he asked the vendor, do you know who I am? He said, yeah, I know who you are. You're, you're Bill Gates. Bill asked the vendor again, do you remember once you gave me a newspaper for free? The vendor said, yes, I remember. I not only gave you one newspaper for free, I gave you two. I want, you to, re I want to repay you, Bill said. I'll give you whatever you want. The vendor said, sir, you won't be able to match the help I gave you. Bill Gates asked him, why? He said, I helped you when I was a poor newspaper vendor, and now you're trying to help me when you have become the richest man in the world. How can you help match mine? And that day, Bill Gates realized that the newspaper vendor was richer than him because he didn't wait to become rich to help someone else. Jesus said, whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The English word for worship comes from an older English word that means to ascribe worth to, to give value to something. And one could imagine the most, that most people would say that they worship God, which is good. But whatever you invest yourself in, whether it be your love, your time, your talent, your money, your energy, your emotion, your enthusiasm, that's your worship. That's your worship. If you worship anything or anyone else apart from God, we're guilty of what's called idolatry, worshiping false gods. That includes placing something as sacred as your family ahead of God. That's what Jesus tells us in the gospel tonight. Whatever you place before God is becoming idolatry. So Jesus is saying that the call to discipleship is preeminent. It must come before every other commitment in our lives, even the love that we have for our parents and even the love we have for our children. It seems a little bit odd. It seems a little bit strange. But after all, it's our love for God. It's our love for God that we need to share with others. 
Today, let's understand the biblical verse should not be quoted out of context or manipulated to suit our own needs, our own purposes. Instead, we learn how to interpret the Bible and apply it correctly and in context to our lives. That's what we're supposed to do. And let's ask God to give us the grace to take away anything or anybody competing against his preeminence in our lives. God is asking us today to put him first, to put him first in our lives. For out of his poverty, he came to this world and he gave us everything. What are we waiting for? Till the day we become rich, the day we become famous, then we'll start to give back to God. How long are we going to wait? Bill Gates waited until he was rich and famous before he decided that he was going to give back. But the vendor, the newspaper man, was willing to give out of his poverty and to start now. How long are we going to wait before we start giving back to God what belongs to God?